Welcome to Football Index Moneyball. In today's video, I'm going to be giving you a review of my first year on Football Index. I'll be going into some of the strategies that I've used to make a profit of £12,500, which is equated to just under £1,000 a month. I also have some tips on things for you to look for, and I'll be explaining how you can structure your portfolio to give yourself a good opportunity at making a profit while minimizing your risk when trading on Football Index. So to start off, I've jumped over to the transaction summary on Football Index. I've set the date range to the 1st of January 2015 to now. Uh, just to show you guys, these are my total deposits so far. The index only started in 2015, so it wasn't possible to deposit before that. So now we've just jumped again and I've changed the date for the transaction summary to the 29th of July 2018. That was the first day that I started on the index. And as you can see, the numbers have all remained the same. So here you can see the deposits. £18,968.30 is the total that I've put into Football Index. My current portfolio value is listed here and my dividends are listed up there as well. I'm now going to go into the next section of the video where we take a bit of a closer look at the numbers. So here we have a spreadsheet that I've made to try and calculate my annual rate of return. Down here you've got the deposits by month. Up top you have some of the more important numbers. The total profits here at 12370 and this is my estimated annual rate of return. I'm not going to spend too long on this. If you want to take a closer look, you can pause the video and if you need any more information or if you'd like the spreadsheet, then just put a comment below and I'll figure a way of getting that to you. So the next thing we're going to look at are the ways to win on Football Index. If you're not already aware of how these first three categories work, then I'm going to put a link in the description to the Football Index Academy page uh, where you can learn all about how the dividends are paid and how they're calculated and such. Um, I'll probably do a separate video at some point with a strategy for picking dividend winning players but for this video I think the more important issue is the next two categories and that's where we separate what kind of trader you are looking to become. First up we've got market appreciation. Now this is a method for investing in football index that can be used to invest by any player no matter what your football knowledge is. So anyone who's interested in financial independence through passive income, this is where the index becomes much more interesting for you. The trackers are similar to an index or an exchange traded fund on the stock market. Basically, the tracker 10 will buy you one share of each of the top 10 players. The tracker 25 buys you one share of each of the top 25 players and so on. Now, I've looked back and I actually have records of what the trackers were trading at a year ago today. And these are the returns that these trackers have offered over the last year. So there's no guarantee that these rates would be continuing in the same magnitude, but considering that the financial markets are in pretty bad shape and the stocks are averaging 8% a year return, including dividends over time, there's so much room for these to drop these rates of return and you'd still be getting an incredible opportunity for creating a profit on your money. And it's also interesting for any traders who have been on the market for a while and want to see how their returns compare to if they'd have just took a more passive approach. Um, I personally, I enjoy the game a lot and I like to try and beat the market, but I still use this as a bit of a benchmark. And if I ever did get to the point where I found that I was returning much less than the trackers, I probably would just call it a day and pile all my money into one of these. So the next way that you can make money on Football Index is through player price appreciation. As I've got more experience on Football Index, I've started to shift my portfolio to have a bigger percentage of these kind of players. Um, in general, almost all of the players on the market are going to be increasing in value over time, but I try and find the overlooked and undiscovered players who have potential for 100% plus gains in price based on similar comparable players, um, who they play for, people who play in the same position, people of similar, similar ages and talents. The other thing that you can look for is high performing players from the lesser known leagues and teams who I think that are possibly going to get transferred based on the stats or the contract situation or the game time if there's another player in their position who's taking away the game time. The most important factor for being successful at picking players whose price is going to increase is understanding the way in which Football Index pays its dividends and how it calculates performance buzz, but also understanding how the market reacts to certain events or prices different types of players. So a good example of this is Jaden Sancho. Now I don't own any Jaden Sancho futures and I've never owned any Jaden Sancho. And this has resulted in missing out on some pretty good returns. And the reason that I did that is because on paper he is not worth his price. His total dividend over the two years that I have records for is 9p. And when you compare that to Pogba and Neymar who have over 25 times that amount for a similar price, 
it's it's obvious which one you would pick. Now, having studied the index, I probably would have bought some futures at Sancho uh, at the start of last season, or at some point in the last season at least. But I also would have sold them when he reached about five or six pound, as he wouldn't have enough room to grow once he gets to those prices. And as I mentioned, his dividend return is almost non-existent, and it wouldn't warrant holding him at that price. If you were to say sign for Man United in January, then I would have to reconsider and see if maybe you could take some of the spotlight from Pogba, or if Pogba was to move to Madrid and then Sancho would now become United's main man. Um, that would be something that I would think about paying the kind of money he's costing now. But I think paying that kind of money and just holding him, hoping that it might happen, it's not really worth it. You'd be better off putting your money in Pogba. So my next point's a bit of an extension of the last one, and that's that don't get dragged into the judging the players based on their football ability alone. The best use of your football knowledge is when you watch games live and if you can spot young talent in the first few appearances or if you watch a lot of under 23s or things like that or if you watch foreign leagues or lower leagues and you can spot players whose stats don't reflect their quality and who you think you can pick them up before they go on like a scoring streak or before they fully hit the potential or get the recognition that they already deserve. Uh, another good example of that would be someone like Teji Savenya had a great season last year and he only really started getting noticed at the end of the season before he got his move to Montpellier. Now finally, the best returns that I've made on Football Index have mostly come from players that I've never heard of before finding them on a website. Uh, most of them I've never seen kick a football and I use articles and statistics sites to help me find the undiscovered stars before they actually hit the mainstream, which can lead to 200 to 300% gains as you're going to see in the next segment. So for the final part of this video, I'm just going to go through some of the players that I've made big profits on and what led me to buy these players. The first thing I just want to show you though is these are the trackers that I talked about in my last section. Just for those players who don't have the football knowledge to be able to pick players on their own or don't really want to spend that much time researching, these are a great option to just capture some of the gains of the football index market as it grows. So the first player that I made a good profit on is Andre Pinamonte. I saw he was on loan from Inter to Frosinone last season. I think he was 18 at the time or 19 and his price when I bought him was way less than that actually I'll go to the one year view so yeah I got him around 30p at the beginning of last season and now he's trading at £1.28 now there's a few players that I own that are in this kind of category of youth who haven't yet been discovered or the category that Andre would have been on now he's actually pretty popular on the index and he's up in the top 200 but it's a great example of you don't really need to know every player. If you look hard enough, you can find them. So the next player I'm going to look at is Luke de Jong. Now, this is a player that I've only actually owned for probably around three months. And I actually bought him down here when he was at 30p. But I just want to show you uh, on who scored the stats from last season's air divisor. And you can see here that Luke de Jong played 34 games, got 28 goals and 6 assists. And he came second in the ratings for the overall players in the air divisor. So if we look back here, at the beginning of summer, he was 30p. And he's a 29-year-old, so he's not the youngest. But still, that kind of return and a player who plays for a team who, even if he'd have stayed at PSV, would have been in Europe. There's just no real downside to owning someone like that. And as you can see, he got up as high as, he actually got as high as 90p. He's down at 75 now. But still, that's 150% return in three months. Next up we have Jonathan Tarr from Bayer Leverkusen. Um, he's a centre back and he's a player that I did own but I've now sold. Uh, he's one of the first players I bought on the index and I bought him because I'd seen him play a few times and I actually owned him on Football Manager a few years ago. And for anyone who's familiar with Football Manager will know that their scouting network is incredible and if they predict players are going to be good, it's definitely something that's worth listening to. Yeah, so I bought him around 45p I think and I sold him around £1.20 at the beginning of the transfer window and the reason I did that is because the chance for his price to go up had been very limited by the time he reached £1.20. He was being linked with a lot of teams in Europe, um, mainly in the Premier League. So I decided to take that profit because if he stayed at Bayer Leverkusen there was no guarantee his price was going to stay the same or go up and it, it, did, it did reach £1.45 and now it has dropped now the transfer window is coming to a close. Uh, this, this is a player that I'll watch and see what his price does. If he was to drop below a pound, I would consider buying him again because I do think he's a great player and he's going to get a move at some point. But that's another tactic that I use quite frequently is to buy a player, sell them when they're overpriced, and then watch the, the price and see if it comes back down to try and buy them again. 
The fourth player here is Alex Isaac, and this is another player who I actually own a football manager, and that was where I became aware of him. And then I saw him play in a pre-season match, I think it was the beginning of 2017-18 for Dortmund, and he scored four goals in pre-season. So <clears throat> his price at the time when I owned him, I think I got him for 45p, somewhere around here. And in January, he went to the air divisor on loan to Willem, and you can see the effect that that had. He actually scored, I think it was 16 games. He scored 13 goals and got six assists. So it just shows how fast the his form or goal scoring record can change the price when they become noticed by other players or other traders. So the next player I'm going to talk about is Maxwell Corne. And this one's quite an interesting one because this is around the time he scored two goals against Man City in the Champions League. Now I just bought one share of him at that time and just kept an eye on him. And in the following few months, he barely played for Lyon. Uh, there was a few stories linking him with a possible move to Man City. So when he dropped down to 45p around here, I did buy him. And then in summer, he jumped back up to 97p. And I actually sold him at his peak near enough, an average of 97 there. So I um, I sold him at 97p when he was linked with Man City again. Uh, he didn't get the move, so he's dropping. I still own one share, and I'm going to keep an eye on him because, again, he's not playing. And I think this is po probably the kind of player where... If you keep buying the dips, you're going to keep making a little bit of a profit. So the next player we've got is Paco Alcazar. The reason I wanted to talk about Paco Alcazar is because I bought him at the beginning of the last season when he moved to Dortmund. And it's a good example of a player who had been playing for a team where he wasn't getting into the team. He was at Barcelona for a number of years before that. He's not, he's not particularly young. He's 26 years old, but he never really got a look in at Barca with Messi and people like that playing and Suarez. So when he moved to Dortmund, I thought he might get a game. So I did buy him around... I think this was around 45p again uh, and I did actually sell him when he went up to £1.30, £1.25 because he scored, I think he scored like two hat-tricks in a number of weeks or he came on and scored a hat-trick or something like that so I sold him at that point because I thought that's about as popular as he's going to get and the price became, compared to other players, he became very overvalued and then in summer, actually at the beginning, of, so he, he steadily dropped over the season and then at the beginning of summer, I actually, I think I paid about 81p for him because I noticed how much he'd fallen and then lo and behold the season starts he scores a few goals and he's shot right back up and I actually sold him again at £1.85 and, and that's another player that I'm going to keep an eye on and if he has a bad run of form and drops down then those are the kind of players that I try and catch on the low points because they just keep coming back that you know they're going to score goals over time but the, the index tends to favour popularity and who's playing well at the minute so if you can be patient and kind of wait out those those low points and then buy and sell when they reach the high points you're going to make a lot of money so now the final player i'm going to talk to you about is jack wilshire and again this is a little bit of a different situation if we look at jack wilshire's graph we can see he stayed low pretty much the whole way through last year i bought him again at the beginning of summer because i recognized that he hadn't played because of an injury all the year he was never really reached his full potential at arsenal so he's english which is always good for football index I just thought there was a good chance that if he started getting a few games for West Ham, then he would go up in value. And as it happened in pre-season, as soon as he started playing in pre-season games, he actually shot up. Um, I think I sold him around 85p. Uh, I kept a couple of hundred shares. I sold them the majority of my position and I wanted to just see how he did in the league. As it happens, I should have sold all of it. Um, he's not been playing that well and I don't really see him going much higher than 62p unless he finds some form. but. Even at 62p, I'm already up 80-90%, so it's worth me just holding him because, again, there's still a chance that you could make 100% profit on Jack Wilshere at 62p. If he did have a good run of games and start scoring a few goals, if he was to get a call up for England, then that would have a huge effect on his price, and you could see more than 100% gain on him there, especially with the Euros coming up next year. Now, to finish off the video, I'm just going to run through my strategy for my portfolio. As you can see on screen, that's got my current dividend players um, as a percentage of my portfolio and also how I hold the remaining balance in my portfolio. I started off with around 50-50 split of dividend versus price appreciation players and after researching a good split and hearing an 80-20 split was a good option from a £100,000 portfolio player. I've slowly shifted away to be more price appreciation heavy and currently you can see I'm sitting at about 79% in price players, 21% in dividend players. This spread is a little bit skewed as 
through the summer, there's a lot of speculation and the media dividends are very unpredictable. So I put a lot more of my money into price appreciation players over that time. I'm now looking to build up the Neymar position for reasons which will be explained in my upcoming dividend investing strategy video. So if you're interested in seeing that, then don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you also hit the bell icon, you can be notified when I post new videos. Thanks a lot for watching. And I would love to hear any feedback you got in the comments below.